traditional RV got you down? Bring tears to your eyes, don't it? Maybe what you need is a teardrop. A teardrop trailer, that is. The basic definition of a teardrop is it's four to six feet wide. Most of them are four to five feet tall. And you raise the back and cook in the back, and you can't stand up in them. The original shape of them, as this one is, is shaped a little bit like a tear. When somebody has a reason to have water coming out of their eyes, they call those tears, and it's a similar shape. As this gathering of teardrop owners demonstrates, the tiny trailers have experienced a rebirth in popularity recently. They got post-war America rolling again in the late 40s. Sales of the round-backed buggies peaked in the 50s. After the war, when all of the aluminum was readily available, the companies started thinking how we could get America happy again and get them back on the road. And that's when the teardrop kind of came out. There are many reasons for today's flood of teardrops. They're light, weighing between six and 750 pounds, so they can be towed by just about anything with wheels. They have a bed inside to protect you from the elements, and you're cooking with a chuck wagon style kitchen in the back. A lot of times uh, people wonder if it's a dog house. They have a lot of questions about, you know, will you really sleep in there? There's a tremendous amount of interest in them. We tent camp for years with our kids, and that's a lot of work, setting up the tent, doing all of that. This, you've got your bed all set up, easy little kitchen. It just made our life so much easier so we could travel more and see more, and, and that was the point of it. But really, how easy is it to go camping with a teardrop trailer? Well, Margie Forbes and her dog are camping out much of the year, and she's 80 years old. What's for supper? So I bought a teardrop because I knew it was small enough I could handle it. And uh, I have gotten into pickles when I couldn't get it backed up well, so I just unhook it and push it. And there's always someone around that's willing to help push. <laughs> Maneuverability is just one of the many advantages of teardrop ownership. Take it off the tongue of the trailer, take the tongue off the hitch, and put the jacks underneath it, throw the back open, and take ice chests off, roll out the sleeping bag, and that's it. It's better than sleeping in a tent because you have, don't sleep on a rock. You can get home and you put your gear in place and it's already stored. You don't have to find a place in the garage. I don't have a vacuum cleaner. I can mop and wax the kitchen floor with a paper towel. I don't have to worry about defrosting a refrigerator. I had a motorhome, and my husband would say, you know, I could go for a sandwich. So up I was out of my queen's chair, and I'm rocking the boat, and I'm, you know, getting the refrigerator, slapping on the mayonnaise. You can't do that with teardrop. Sure, teardroppers are a satisfied lot, but they also admit these microscopic RVs aren't perfect. The hardest part is changing clothes, getting dressed and undressed for bed. It's a little small on a rainy day. Their kitchens aren't really the greatest. You have to be a short person to work in the kitchen with the flap up on the back, and you need to learn how to pack real good. <laughs> There's a place for everything, a little cubby hole for everything. And by golly, it's got to go there. And when nature calls, a teardropper heads for the hills. They're too small for a bathroom. I'll show you the piece to resist on. Are you waiting for this? <laughs> you know, I tell them, look, I have an ice box, a table, we could cook, and there's a restroom inside, a toilet, and they said, what? And I show them my two-pound Folger coffee can up on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Which we don't use. I don't want America to think that we do. Enterprising teardroppers don't let a few little drawbacks spoil their fun. Many modify their vehicle to enhance its usability. The, the privacy curtain was the idea because I had the surfboard rack. And I made, with electrical tubing, the foundation for it. And for dressing, I know that makes everybody more comfortable, especially my wife. For your average teardrop owner, the creativity doesn't stop there. A big part of this lifestyle is to personalize your trailer with a theme, both inside and out.
time I had seen a cartoon dealing with uh, teardrop trailers. And the cartoon had a white picket fence with some flamingos. There was a teardrop with a uh, flower box and curtain. And I decided that was going to be my theme of this particular uh, camping. And my wife did all of it. She's really good at decorating. And they give out those little coupon things and you send away and they send you free Pillsbury Doughboy things. And so that's kind of where it came from. It's black light paint, and with black light, some of the planets fade out into black holes, and the comet on the side that gets really intricate, and you can see all of the ice streaming off of it and everything. And it's uh, a different thing at night. I've always been just a little bit different, and I figured that this would be a good expression of it. If you're still skeptical and think the idea of these compact campers just doesn't hold water, take a look at Dave Locke's teardrop trailer. It's also a boat. It's one of only a handful left, made in 1961. It's a conversational piece. People don't believe it's a boat. It's a unique way to carry a boat. A lot of people you see going down the road and they're towing a boat behind them. Or they've got the boat up on top of the truck and they can't get it off because the trailer's in the way. Well, this way, we just pull up alongside the launch ramp or the lake and, and unload it and slide it down the side of the bank. You don't find something like this in a museum. People don't even have them anymore, you know? So now you've seen that not all teardrops are created equal, but they do share one major element. Yes, people do sleep in them. Unless you've slept in one, people are looking down at you thinking you're crazy and what are you doing sleeping in that box? You Never. have to love your mate to sleep in a teardrop. <laughs> Definitely. Once you find that invisible line, sleeping in the It's pretty cozy. Great. First time we slept in ours, we crawled in, my wife laid down and she says, don't pump your head on the shelf, thump. It's oh. funny, you'll be in here and people will be walking by and they're... They're looking and gawking and talking, and, and we're in here listening to them. They don't know we're in here. They don't know what we're doing. We're up to things, and it's all good. Teardrop trailers have been priced as high as over $20,000. If that price tag brings tears to your eyes, the average new one runs about $5,000. But if you're handy with a toolkit, you can build your own for a lot less. Got an urge to see the country close up in a convenient way? A teardrop trailer just may open your eyes. If anybody wants to break into camping and doesn't want to sleep in a tent, this is really the way to go. On a sunny day, it's wonderful, and you're never a stranger when you go into the campground, and they all want to look at your little rig, and it makes you feel like you're driving a movie star. <laughs> Still to come, a man who spent 12 years building what may be the craziest RV of them all. I made a vow to myself that someday when I had the money, I would make something that really took the rolling home idea and pushed it right to the limit. Monday on